Well, welcome back to another Wayno's Photos camera video. And today we're talking about log, log footage. It's a selection that you have on your camera that increases your dynamic range. Now, if you're new to using log or you're thinking about using log, you picked the right video because in this video, we're going to talk about what are the pros, what are the cons to do with log? Should you shoot in the normal picture profile, which is the standard in the camera, or should you decide to use log? So let's roll an intro and let's have a discussion about what is log, what are the benefits, and also what are the disadvantages? Well, log is a way that the camera interprets the information off the sensor differently. You're not getting any increased performance out of the sensor. The sensor is the sensor, but what it's doing is it's changing the incremental value that goes from a linear. So if you have the brightest part of the sensor, which can sense the most brightest part, and then it just goes white, or you have the darkest part of the sensor, which is what you can see before it goes completely black and the sensor can't detect any lower light. So that's the extremities of the sensor. Now, normally when you have a normal picture profile, when you have your camera in your standard setting, that's a linear incrementation from the darkest to the brightest. Now, when you go to log, it's exactly what it means. It's a log function, so it's not linear. And what it does is, it changes the incrementation so it has finer incrementation at the extremities of the sensor, which is the dark and the light. And in the middle, the increments are not as sensitive. So what that does is it gives you more detail in the, the brighter parts of the sensor and it gives you more detail in the darker parts of the, center, the sensor. Now, the disadvantage to that is it requires correction when you get it into post because the picture looks like it's got no color it's washed out and if you use some of the very high log systems like c-log2 it almost looks like there's no color in it at all so you need to bring it back to a normal looking picture because obviously people don't want to see a super faded picture now to do that the manufacturers have what they call correction logs for rec 709 and different cameras have different correction factors. I tend, I've made my own a lot and I do my own coloring. I know people say you should correct and put a lot on. I don't do that, but I'm probably not a good example of the best way to do it. But the traditional way or the technical way is you correct it back to a corrected image. Then you add your your artistic LUT on top of that, which might make it warmer or cooler or whatever. So that's what you should be doing in your process. Now, why doesn't everyone shoot in log and correct it? Because it makes it harder to shoot. And this is one of the disadvantages when you shoot with log. You can't really rely on the back of your screen of the camera because the picture is now distorted. Now, even though some of the cameras have what they call an assist, a view assist or, or correction into the camera. And you can also load some LUTs into the camera. It doesn't really give you the true picture. It's, it's like, it gives you an idea, but you can't rely on it. Therefore, you need to use in-camera tools like zebras, false color, or a histogram. And you need to be really confident with using those tools. You can't just look at the back of the camera. You've got to forget about what the picture looks like and use your tools. And of course, this makes the shooting a lot more difficult. And when you're in log, the exposure is a lot more critical because you have this very significant change at the extremities of the sensor's ability to sense light. So that is the disadvantages compared to shooting in the in the standard camera picture profile, which is like your normal neutral standard sharpness, all those sorts of things. Now, if you're a new shooter, should you shoot in log? Now, the whole benefit of shooting in log is to increase your dynamic range. Now, when we talk about dynamic range, we're talking about the ability of the camera to capture the brightest part of the image and the darkest part of the image. Now, for example, if you're outside and it's a really bright day, like I live here in Australia and the sun is extremely bright. So you have this blue sky 
and then you may have someone standing in shade. So the variance between the darkest and lightest is really huge. And if you want to capture all that, you want more dynamic range because cameras are not as good as our eyes and can't capture the full scope of the different lights within that picture that you're trying to take. So what you do is, is you use something to give you more dynamic range. And the more expensive the cameras, if you go to movie set cameras, they have really good dynamic range. So that's what we're chasing here. But the, the trade-off is that when you have different light sources, even different light sources, you gotta keep adjusting the settings on the camera to fit in with the tools that you are using. You can't rely on the back of the screen. Now, when you shoot in a picture profile, yes, you might not get a slight dynamic range, but you can look at the back of your camera you can adjust for the scenes quicker. And also the settings don't vary as much because of the way that the sensors increments are set. So it's much easier if you're in a running gun situation, you need to capture those pictures really quickly. You can quickly see on the back of the camera, adjust the camera to get that footage. And you also, what you see is what you get. But when you're shooting in log, what you see is not what you get. So that's a massive disadvantage. And the other disadvantage is there is a extra process in post where you need to correct that image. Now, what I normally do is correct for one image and then transfer that correction to all my other clips because generally they've been shot on the same day in a similar environment. And then I just tweak them if it was a little bit dark or a little bit brighter. But if you are thinking of shooting in log and you're a little bit scared or there's a bit of anticipation about trying it, I would suggest that you practice. You practice doing it. Don't go out and say, hey, look, I'm going to do this job and I'm going to shoot in log because you'll come back and the clips tend to look a lot darker than what you thought they would, especially if you're shooting in a dark scene. Sometimes they can be so dark when you correct them that you go, oh, really, I wish I had more lights or I'd, I'd push the ISO a bit further and you can really get caught out. So I would suggest to practice shooting in log first before you go out and do a job for someone or you do something that, that other people are going to see. That is my recommendation. Anyway, guys, I don't want to put you off from shooting in log. It's something that can increase the quality of your picture, but it's something that you need to appreciate that does take more skill and more work to shoot in log. So all the best if you're trying to shoot in log and also picture profile, if you're not shooting in a high dynamic range situation, your normal picture profile works quite well. well anyway, guys, that's where I'm gonna leave it and I will see you next video.